Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about my solution to the reserve list and go over why I feel like it's already kind of out there. So the reserve list, many people, or I guess a small percentage of people do not want it to go away. Now, why do they not want it to go away? I can probably assume it's due to the price. You don't want to pay $500 for an underground C and then have it be $5 the next day. You don't want Chronicles to happen. And yeah, so let me address that. If that's the main focus, if there's no other reason people don't want the reserve list reprinted outside the price, then this argument would be good because it would allow your old cards to keep their price as we've seen time and time again. The artwork does matter and the age of the card does matter. So a Desert Twister has been reprinted and is worth maybe five cents, but a Desert Twister in Arabian Nights is worth $10. Same card, does the exact same mechanics, the same effect, and the price difference is due to not the card artwork, because the card artwork is the same, but due to one being older. In Plane Shift, we had this interesting system where and you could receive a regular foil card or you could receive a card with alternative art. And that alternative art card was way more expensive than the regular foil. So in Urtai, it is $83 compared to his regular foil being 14. But with the other two, it's actually much more noticeable. I think Urtai has received a price spike recently and that is why his price has, because of the wizard deck, that's why his price is still kind of little, the multiplier is not correct in my opinion as of now. The multiplier should be much, much higher for the unique artwork versus the non-unique. So I would say just reprint the dual lands, but re with re artwork that everyone agrees is worse off, right? That you look at the artwork and you're like, yeah, all right, I mean, I'll play it because I need to play it, but it's not something that would make me uh, very happy. And that way you can make sure that all the collectors are happy, all the people who invested in money are happy. One of the argument against the reserve list has always been playability. Um, there's a limited amount of cards out there. Magic during Revise, during Alpha and Beta, it was not, they didn't believe, I, I mean, I don't think anyone assumed it would be as big as it is today with 20 million players. So if you assume your player base was let's say 100,000 players, you're not printing the same amount of cards as 20 million. And before, during the reserve list, we didn't have cards in, we had cards in Radio Shack, I feel like, but that was the only place I saw them. But there wasn't Barnes & Nobles, they weren't on Toys R Us, they definitely were not in Walmart or Target or any of these huge retailers, which they are in now. So the print run was much, much smaller. It was actually a known quantity. Uh, it was not much of it was printed. So when you talk about all this stuff and you go back to, uh, you have to go back to why it exists in the first place. It exists to protect people's quote investments, uh, quote collections. But modern Wizards of Coast, it is not in Wizards of Coast's best interest to have the reserve list. If I would be quite frank with you, because remember masters, they can sell for $10 a pack. Imagine what they could sell reserve list masters for maybe like 50 bucks a pack, $100 a pack, depending on what's in it. If Power 9 was in it, then I think you leave Power 9 alert alone because there's really no reason to reprint that. It's not being played in Legacy. It's not being played in an eternal format. That Vintage, I know it's a format, but I think it's already dead for the most part. I don't know. I've never played Vintage. So... Outside of that, you do have some options that I feel like mo more people can use that they're not, they're kind of ignoring. You can proxy up cards. I'm not saying counterfeit or buy counterfeit cards, but I'm saying that you can proxy up cards and you can print them r relatively easy. Even during JST Mind Sculptor, people are proxying up JST Mind Sculptors and you go to Kinko's and you can print out like an entire deck if you wanted to, to proxy up. And it wouldn't be like you're trying to sell it or counterfeit it. It would just be like, oh, you're testing the deck to see if it's good. So in my opinion, there are many ways around the reserve list, but the best way is to have artwork for the new cards that is subpar. 
And when you look at the artwork, it's very clear if it's subpar. It's not like a mystery as to, oh, well, that artwork is way better than original. Let's buy that one. You see the $65 compared to the $5. You can still have that price point. Uh, you can still have the price point you want on the dual lands, if uh, the original dual lands. Alpha, beta, dual lands will always be that pricey, no matter how many times you reprint it. One good example is the J Tome. J Tome in beta is 500 bucks. J Tome in revised is like five cents. Same card, does exactly the same thing, but people. They like the beta version a lot better because it's older and black bordered. So for these dual lands, maybe don't even make them um, white bordered, right? Make them even less. Make them like, uh, I don't know, green bordered or neon pink or some ridiculous color where you would still you would still have the value on the original card because it looks better. It has the regular border and you could have a new play group. What I always didn't understand was, and maybe this is not correct, if you're a legacy player, wouldn't you want more players, right? Wouldn't you eventually get tired of playing the same decks over and over again? Not only are you playing the same deck, but likely your opponent, who also doesn't have like $10,000 to spend and blow on decks, he's going to play the same deck. So I play the same dude or the same deck every single day. Or every single time we play and it's ridiculous right it's not that fun because there's no diversity so wouldn't it be better for just like modern wouldn't it be better for everyone modern if the cards were more affordable and then you could have a bigger player base and you could play against more people and even if you played against the same person that same person would have more decks because they could afford it well the answer is probably yes i mean modern is modern and it looks like a great growing format right now Legacy, I would assume that Legacy players feel the same way. Now, there is a caveat. The caveat here is some people don't play Magic, and some people are only interested in the financial investment of Magic. Uh, and I use that investment term very, very loosely. They look at the portfolios, they look at Magic cards, the Magic cards outperform the portfolios, then they buy it, buy, buy, and then they have more than one playset of a dual land. And if you have more than one playset of a dual land, you're restricting someone else from playing. That Essentially, that's what you're doing. If you have 10 playsets of a dual land, like some people do, or 100 playsets of a dual land, then you're restricting that many people from playing that deck. And I get it, you invested money, you saw the money grow, and now you feel really, you would feel sick to your stomach if a card just plummeted in price, right? Like if Tamagoyf, let's take Tamagoyf, it went from $150 to $70. Um, and you can't even get $70 retail. Maybe you get 50 bucks retail for it. Yeah, Tamagoyf is Tamagoyf. And eventually it might rise again, if assuming they don't reprint it in every single master set in existence. But I like, I like more players. I like more decks. I like to own more decks myself. And you can have it all. You can have, you can tell these investors, hey, we're going to protect your quote investment while still letting people play but having different artwork. The artwork and limited nature of certain cards makes them valuable. But you can have cards that are mechanically exactly the same. And or in this case, you, I mean, you're looking at the, eight dollars for 60 right it's a multiplier of 10 so let's say the new underground c is 50 bucks which is quite reasonable you can still have underground c at 500 dollars if you if that's what you wanted to do but you could have a lot more players and maybe maybe those underground c's actually become more liquid because those players want to upgrade from their neon pink edition to the real deal and that's kind of what's happening in modern right now where you, you don't see, you see price drops and you see, you know, things being reprinted and you th see things that are not reprinted go up in price. But the core, I guess the core result of modern is more players, more decks, and everyone as a player is happier. These stores are happier. Wizards of Coast sells $10 packs. I mean, how happy do you think they are? These stores are happier because they're making huge margins. They're buying these boxes at 140 I believe, and they're selling them at 250 or 240 
So they're making a lot more money selling boxes of this stuff than selling singles, right? And then, you know, it would defeat the whole counterfeit issue. Just like in modern, counterfeits are down because card prices are down. And counterfeits like, are not cheaper than, they're not that much cheaper anymore because I see them on Craigslist all the time and they're asking like ridiculous amounts of money for counterfeits, right? Okay, great. You count, it's a counterfeit Black Lotus, but why are you asking $200 for it? Because counterfeiters are greedy and they're just self-destroying. They are self-destructive. Eventually, they'll do some dumb stuff like that. And if you buy the cheaper card or you can buy a version of the card for less money, then yeah, buy the real deal. Of course, buy the real deal. It's like, okay, you can buy a fake car or a fake Babe Roof and feel all nice, right, at a meeting, or you can buy the real deal. Yes, buy the real deal. I don't know anyone who would buy a fake Babe Roof card for like half the price of a real one it doesn't make any sense but anyway that is it bye guys